Oh, what's the use? I don't have any enthusiasm to say fuck. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Witcher Season 3. Now, I know I had the funny start, um, but I actually went and rewatched the review and then I thought about it. I just kind of meandered on and talked. I think I'm going to kind of sound a little bit repetitive of what other people have said. And that was something that I kind of was worried about with how I was going to talk about it because Witcher Season 3 already had an uphill battle with a lot of things. The first two seasons, while okay, had a lot of issues. I feel that the second one made a lot of improvements over the first one, but in terms of rewatchability, the first one had a lot more better episodes, in my opinion. And then on top of that, obviously, Henry leaving. And now I will admit, when I saw his post about it, I was like, well, there goes the only reason I've been enjoying this show. And that's not me being any form of hater on the other rest of the cast. I think that some of them do really well. If anything, Yennefer was my favorite character in the first season because of her story. I really enjoyed her introduction and a few episodes that followed afterwards, but since then, she just becomes more and more, and I think that they tried to recapture that in the second season. It didn't really work, and in this one, they do even less with her. Another thing that I complained about in the first season was that Ciri meant nothing. Second season did a lot better, making her more important. And in the third season, they full-on dive into that, but they don't have the gravity or the understanding of why she should be as important as he, she is, other than just, that's because it's in the books, you know, you have to understand that she's important. Something that a lot of people were making their criticism about is how, obviously, the first two Particularly, the second season was a very large departure from the books. There are sometimes writers who can take said source material, alter it, make it different, but still respectful. Obviously, the Lord of the Rings series is a very good example. Um, Mike Flanagan, who made The Haunting of Hill House. That series is nothing like the book, yet at the same time, it absolutely is. And that's a very rare talent. You can't see that most often. Uh, even Game of Thrones. While those two dum-dums would go on to show that they have absolutely no means of making their own good content, they knew how to adapt a, a novel series, a very well-written novel series, and put that into a television show while also changing a few things. But then obviously once those changes became more and more apparent, then obviously the show's quality fell off. The Witcher writers, which if you look at all of them on IMDb, Almost all of them are not the same ones that started as writers. They are all writing assistants for different shows, including The Witcher, but almost no one is the same writer that they were from the first season. And same with the directors. There are maybe one or two directors who come back from the first season uh, and come back to the third, but you really could tell the quality difference. I made compliments about the first season while looking like it was shot on a Hallmark budget and having sets from Kid and King Arthur's Court, it still tried its best. Second season definitely disparaged the budget a bit here and there, but I felt it better. Season three, I feel that they went back to that Hallmark kind of cinematography. The sets, some are okay, some are ass. Biggest issue that this show has suffered ever since it started and it suffers even more so in the third season is that you do not care about the world. You don't care about the continent. You don't care about anything that's going on. You don't even care about what's going on with Garol. And when you don't have a vested interest in anything, it's hard to watch a show. There's all of this political drama that's going on, but they have done such a poor job at establishing it because they think that they need to dumb it down for audiences, which I, in a very, very small vacuum, understand where that producer was coming from. And I also kind of wonder if maybe there was a little bit of translation issue, maybe. He is from Poland, but Game of Thrones was one of the biggest shows of all time, and they certainly didn't dumb it down. So why on earth do you think that that was going to be your excuse? I felt that that was a very, very poor excuse for how simplistic that they've taken with the storytelling and with simplistic they've like ideals that they've done in terms of the political strife. You don't care about any of the political upheaval happening in this show. You don't care about the elves and their want to help Nilfgaard. You don't care about 
what's his name from Outlander who's here doing like a kind of in between a really bad performance and an okay-ish performance. You don't care about the wizards. You don't care about the surprise villain because you're like, where, who have you been this last few seasons? I didn't even care who you were. It is a major issue when you have this supposed large and grandiose story that's going on. But the only sole point of interest you have is one character, not all of the other characters that you have. Game of Thrones did establish this by, even if you didn't like the characters, they were really well written. For the most part, Sansa took a long time to get decent, I feel. But everything that happened around her was well in, was very well written and very interesting and very thought provoking. The Witcher season three doesn't have that at all. Not even close. I can't tell you where I got a pulse, but I can tell you that I actually did get interested once things started to happen in the sixth episode. Because I didn't watch this as part one, part two. When I saw that it was still going to be eight episodes, I knew that was Netflix doing a marketing tactic because they knew they were going to run into fucking issues with Henry leaving. They did the exact same thing that they did for Stranger Things, except Stranger Things, it made sense to do it. Whereas the fifth episode, it's not even that big of a cliffhanger. I just remember going, oh, that was it? Oh, I'd been pissed, because that's so boring. And then when they had the audacity to have those posters, those light up posters in certain areas where it said, yes, Henry is still part of the show. And they basically had to do so much PR beforehand to just beg people to keep watching the show after Kent Henry had announced that he was leaving. I don't like Liam Hensworth. I think he's a bit of a prude. I don't think he's that great of an actor, but I even feel a little bit bad for him walking into this because he's basically walking up to a firing squad. And that's even if. The numbers, while they are not talking about them because Netflix never does, they haven't boasted whatsoever about The Witcher. If you were watching it, you know, that top 10 shows in the world, top 10 shows in your country, whatever. I think The Witcher was number one for one day and then it immediately got circumvented. I almost want to bet money that season four isn't happening. I almost want to bet money. If they canceled Altered Carbon, um, and Altered Carbon is a very good kind of comparison. Like the first season, wow, very disjointed and the main story you didn't care about. The world building was so cool. And you also did care about the main character's story. Season two got way more of the definitive story, but the world building went down the tubes and also sort of the budget. They didn't make a season three from that. They've canceled so many shows in the last little while, and I think they have to admit that now that they don't have Henry, they have to drop it. They, they can't possibly think that Liam's gonna get this show when they are being literally lambasted all over the internet. No idea what Rotten Tomato critics were fucking smoking, because I don't I have no idea how this season got a 77% with them. I don't care about the characters. I don't care about the strife. The, the world building is boring. The entire political upheaval element of the story is terrible. The writing is so dumbed down, so pretentious, yet so ill-conceived that it warrants no rewatching. This is almost, almost on Netflix's Resident Evil show scale. And if they didn't bring that one back for a season two, I didn't think that the other two seasons warranted positive scales because they didn't they had too many flaws to warrant it but i still gave each one a three this one for season three of the witcher gets a one out of seven for me i really really hope they don't make another one and i know that there's some people who are going to be upset i don't know who i haven't found any one yet who <laughs> Aside from Think Story, which, by the way, shout out to him for helping explain to me what actually happened in these two seasons with, or sorry, these two videos about season three, because the show didn't do its job at all in telling me what was happening. He is also referencing the books quite a bit in terms of like correlating events. But yeah, he sounded the most hopeful that season four was happening. So for his sake, maybe, but I, I, I really don't think this is going to get another season. 
Anyways, guys, that's all from me. Those are my thoughts about Witcher Season 3. What did you guys think of it? Did you guys watch it yet? Let me know in the comments below. I'm interested to see what you guys have to say. Otherwise, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, see you guys next time.